Sure. All right, we're live. All right, Mama, she raised no fool. To What's my up, to my left in the striker shirt is Mr. Rich Catino. From Metal Asylum and Brave Words and the Metal Hall of Fame, Sea of Tranquility. And uh, Jack, who are we joined by tonight? And then, yeah, we are really honored today to have someone that Rich and I have been uh, looking up to and listening to for pretty much our whole lives. So it's an honor to have Brian Wheat of motherfucking Tesla. Thank you yeah. so much, What's Brian, up? for joining us. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that I called MTV for Dial MTV to get your songs on there several times <laughs> in the 80s. Thank you. I appreciate that. Those were the good old days, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, welcome. But yeah, welcome. I mean, first things first, you know, we talked about it a little bit ahead of time. I know you're in Texas, so you're everything's all right now, right? You're doing okay? You know, I know that you weathered some crazy shit there. Uh, yeah. The we, past uh, couple weeks. We were we 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 live in New York now, so we went to our Texas house for the winter. They said, "Okay, we'll have a warmer winter. We'll go down to Texas for the winter." And it was <laughs> colder in New York than it was in our house. I mean, in Texas, in our house in New York, it was like zero at wow. my house in Texas, and it was like twenty-five in my house in New York. So, so much for the warmer winter. Right. No, I hear you, man. And, and what area are you in in Texas? Where Things were going on. What happened? West and Texas. how were you? How were you affected? No power, no water. You know, we had. It's brutal down there, man. People, mm. people uh, down there were fucked up. They had some, you know, they they they're not used to that kind of weather. They're yeah. not equipped for it. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's my, you know, we can kind of chuckle about it here and there, but for a lot of people, it wasn't funny. So we're glad, you know, glad to, no, to, glad you're doing okay. It's not funny when anyone right, right. suffers. You know, I've seen some people on Facebook make comments like, you know, tell them to pull themselves up by the bootstraps and shit. You mm -hmm. know, like making fun of people from Texas. Look, Texas people are beautiful people, man. They'll give you the shirt off their back. They're great, great fucking people. You know, it's not like we all got the OK Corral down there. <laughs> We're just, you know, shooting people and stuff. They're they're good people, just like they're good people all, right. all over the. So well, good, yeah. All right, well, we got we got a bunch of questions. I know we don't have a whole lot of time. You out there, if you're watching, you know, feel free to drop some questions in the yeah in the I chat. Have some questions I haven't heard in a while. <laughs> right, we won't ask you who are your influences. We won't ask you the same ten questions you always get. No, so, Rich, people Rich, to read, people read the book. Got its name, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Rich, you fire us off. Go ahead. Okay, well, for someone who is on the fence about getting the book, how can you sell the book to us? Sell it to sell it to the fans right now. What's different about it? Uh, there's some serious issues which are kind of handled in a light manner because it's me talking, so it's like sitting down right now, like we're talking. You know, mm. it's in my voice. And right. It's pretty funny at times. You know, actually. Mm. You know, the way I, I talk, my sense of humor comes out in the book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're looking for the telltale, tell all the dirt on Tesla kind of book, it's not that. Right. It's, it's not that. I mean, I talk about the guys in Tesla and, and what we've done and what we've been through, but it's not like a, you know, a dirt book. It's more, you know, the book is on my life and what I have gone through in life and what I go through being on tour with Tesla and, you know, everything. It's just kind of a, you know, a, a history of me and Tesla and mm. how, you know, me and Frank put the band together. So it talks about that, right. you know, it talks about, it talks about lots of things. It talks about health and issues that I deal with. It talks about depression and anxiety. So that right. those aren't most typical kind of things you're going to find in a, rock and roll memoir you know usually you're gonna, right. it's going to be about fucking chicks and doing cocaine and crashing right. cars and spending money yeah mm -hmm. uh, you know there was the chicks and the cocaine but no crashing cars so but mm -hmm. you know it's it's that kind of it's 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 a different it's different than your normal book that you mm -hmm. would expect from a guy in a rock band or that maybe you've read in the past it goes into some some other personal issues that people say to me, oh, I didn't realize you, you go through that. And, you know, right. And then people ask me, well, why did you talk about those issues? And I did it 
so maybe you, one of you guys suffers from anxiety or depression or has, you know, autoimmune disease. And to say, look, I'm just like you, you know, just because I'm in a rock band doesn't mean I don't have the same problems you may incur in your daily life. I have a mm-hmm. set and that we're all just kind of the same. Doesn't matter what we do. And I thought maybe if that helps somebody, especially somebody who was suffering from depression, then, you know, I'm fine. To, I'm happy to divulge what I go through um, if it helps somebody. Oh, great. Yeah, I love that angle of the book. I was going to that's one of my questions was going to be, can you address that? But I think you just did. And, and it, I think yeah. it is great because yeah, you're right. Like I've read Motley Cruz books. Yeah, and, and people say, you thing. know, uh, I hear you were bulimic. I was at one time. It's like, well, the, you know, that's that's usually something girls go through. Well, not necessarily. I knew guys in the rock bands in rock bands in the 80s. That that's how we maintained our, our look, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and people say, why do you want to put that out there? Because why not? I don't care if, like, like you said, hey, you know, people talk shit or whatever. People have been talking shit for years. They're always going to talk shit. You can't stop them. But if it helps somebody, mm. then I'm for it. I'm down for it. If, if yeah. me, you know, coming out, you know, about whatever I what do or have, or if I was gay and I said, hey, I'm gay, and that helps some gay person, then I'm happy to do it. I'm, but I'm not. Mm. Not you know, and I don't care if someone is. My best mm. friend is. So it's, it's no big, but you know, people are very guarded and I think, right. you know, there's something about when you put that shit out there on paper or into the cosmic airwaves or whatever it is, as long as it can do some good for somebody that, that was the purpose of it. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, that's what I liked so- about um, when I was, that's what I liked about when I was reading it because it goes back and forth between your personal life your perspective on what was going on at the time and then what was happening with Tesla at the same time. So it was a right. bouncing, you know, going back and forth a little bit. Everything was good. Yeah. I kind of, I'm kind of all over the place. And I think I even say that in the book. I, I kind of bounce around a lot. Well, it's yeah. not like you're bouncing around. It's just like you're, you're telling those couple of different perspectives all at the same time. So it is cohesive. It just happens at that moment, at that present, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it's how I perceived mm. Tesla through my eyes at right. that time. You know, if you were to ask Jeff or Troy or Frank, mm. you know, how they perceived it, they probably it would they would have different answers to some of the stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or mm-hmm. they would say, I don't even remember that. You know what I mean? So that it's it's just my view on how it went down and you know that that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think in the book, you're brutally honest about yourself and about the stuff you've gone through and whatnot, but you're also like brutal, brutally honest about your friends and fans and, and teammates. And in the my band. family. So, yeah. Right? I mean, I'm brutally honest about everything. I mean, it's like, that's me, though. I'm the guy in the room that just, you know, there'll be a fucking 900-pound elephant in the room, and I'm the guy that go, hey, do you know there's a fucking elephant over there, and he, he's shitting in the corner? <laughs> you might want to do something about it. And a lot of people yeah. just go like this, right? Mm. I'm the dude that'll say it. And that's what gets me in trouble sometimes. <laughs> You're not going to get in trouble here. That's okay. But uh, but so did you? Did, did you get any in trouble? <laughs> uh, did, so did you get any reviews from the from your bandmates? Have, have you any reactions, responses? I don't know that any of them have read it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I saw Troy yesterday. Uh, I don't think he's read the book. I know Jeff had a few copies that his wife bought. So I'm sure he heard about it. And he was like, say whatever you want. It's all true. Uh, mm. I don't know if Frank's read it. I don't think he has. I talked to him the other day. And I don't know if Dave's read it. How long has it been out now? December. Two months. So it's still fairly new. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've got some shit from my family. <laughs> my one brother, a couple of my brothers, you know, are mm-hmm. mad at me. Yeah. Well, from reading the book, yeah, it seems like that's... Well, you know, they have a... They like to live in this fantasy. And I just told the truth <laughs> how my family was when I grew was growing up. Mm-hmm. And, then, you know, I think they got bummed out. They watched too mm-hmm. much Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> Well, 
It's it's nonfiction. I mean, you know, it's it's your yeah. it's your true story. Yeah, yeah. I, I deal in reality. It wasn't a fiction a fiction book. <laughs> I mean, some biographies and autobiographies are kind of like you know you read it and you go like that didn't happen. Even even though I've never met these people, I know this didn't happen. But yeah, I, I that's what I really as well, a reader there's a lot of trust. If I'm able to make myself look bad, what the fuck? You know. I didn't say something, anything about anyone else that I didn't say about myself. Right. You know, it's not like I said all this shit about all these other people. And then I made myself out to be some kind of fucking angel or saint. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, I'm not, I was no choir boy. Well, the only other thing I'll say about it is I felt like there's also a lot of love, even for Tommy and for, you know, you, you, you have harsh stuff, but I feel like there's love behind it. I mean, that's, I mean, maybe well, I'm reading that into that it. Far. I wouldn't say there was love for Tommy. Okay. Well, for the other guys, when maybe the other guys, then when you're like, ah, he, I mean, he did this, he did that, but you know, I could sell I, like I brotherly love. Love's a pretty strong word, so is hate. So I won't use either one of those when it comes to him. I don't love or hate him. But okay. um, uh, yeah, I just kind of told it how I saw it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, how I, I, how I viewed it. And, you know, I, I, I think it's pretty accurate from what I can remember and what I do remember. Like I said, if someone else in the band wrote wrote a book about the band and, you know, they probably, it would it would be different. And that will be the fun if someone else does it. You know, I know Troy's putting out a book next year. And, okay. You know, it'd be great to, if he talks about some of the things, like, the, I'll give you one example. That story of Chrissy Hine being in the studio. And I said, it was right. me and Jeff. Troy says it was me and Troy. Okay. And I can't remember. <laughs> I thought it was me and Jeff sitting with Chrissy Hine. <laughs> so he's saying it was me and him. And fuck, maybe he's right. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Well, that's forgivable. You know, that kind of thing. It's not like, oh, oh this whole yeah, thing is I, I, Everyone, <laughs> you know, people forgive. I mean. I didn't do some. I didn't say anything that bad about anybody that you know what I mean. No, I mean, no, definitely not. I suppose the only thing you know, people say, "Oh, we didn't." People say, "We don't. Re- we didn't realize you guys took drugs." Come on, give me a fucking break. <laughs> of course, we <laughs> took drugs, and we drank, <laughs> and we had sex. <laughs> you know, we did all those things. We just never really talked about them. Because we weren't in a lot of magazines back in the day or, you know, outside of Signs and Cowboy and Love Song, MTV didn't really play our videos, just those three. Mm -hmm. You know, and Little Susie, I think they played, but that really was it. They didn't play us a lot. And Edison's Medicine. I remember seeing Edison's Medicine a lot, too. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I remember they were like, um, they were like, they had their panties in an uproar about all the things we were saying about Tesla, how, you know, uh, Tesla invented all this and they were like fact checking us and shit. So I, I, oh. I, I seem to remember them putting up a bit of a, well, how do you know that's true kind of thing? And well, well okay. Mm. Well, kind of like today, right. On Facebook, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. they were having their time in TV, um, <laughs> but, and then we never got any, covers of magazines we were never on it we were on one cover rip magazine in 1991 for psychotic supper jeff was on the cover with a military helmet or something that was the only cover of a magazine we ever got so we didn't get a lot of press when you look at the time that we came out um compared to you know poison or motley or Mm-hmm. Warrant or Winger or White Snake, you know what I mean? We we were we were we were we got a lot. We, one thing we did have was a lot of radio play. You know, we we yeah, yeah. did really well at at rock radio. And, and you guys got great we, tours. You got great tours too. Yeah, and we had great tours. Yeah, we're we're good live. We're still good live. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Yep. I think I think you know we I think we're better now live than we were back then because we're not as fucked up. You know, we don't really do, you know, we're older now. We don't really party. Mm-hmm. You know, now we, we say, Hey man, are you taking that pill for your blood pressure too? You know, shit like that. <laughs> or you see, like, hey, you got a bump. 
So, <laughs> you know, that's that's what we're in. Yeah, that's where we're at these days. You know, we're just, you know, five old men. <laughs> and with Dave Rude in the mix, right? I mean, how's, how's that? Well, he's getting dynamic? old, too. He's, I think he's 40-something yeah. now. Okay. I think he's out right. of his 30s. <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I have to, I have to see. I think he's 40 now. Maybe just turned 40. Yeah. I think he's 42. I think I'm 16 years older than him. So I'm 58. Right. So he, you know, he's, he's in his 40s. All right. He's been in the band, what, 16 years? Wow. 15 years. Yeah. And he was 27. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's 42. He was 27 mm-hmm. when he joined. He's been in the band. He's been in the band longer than Tommy was in the band. Yeah, you're right. Doing math. Yeah. Uh, there was not supposed to, no, no, no more math during this interview, please. Uh, but uh, well, I was, yeah. I was good at math. I am terrible at <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Rich, I know, I like, I know you out there. I mean, we got people watching all over. So, if you have questions, drop them in. But, Rich, go yeah. ahead. I, I know you got a, we both have a bunch of questions. So, go ahead, Rich. Well, ask, there you go. man. All right. So, is it accurate that you sold 14 million albums? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who knows if the, the count is accurate coming from the record company? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, right. how many albums do we have? Uh, 10, 12? Fuck, more than that. 12? Yeah, li- think, between right? live and studio. Yeah, you got yeah, live and studio. And, hits, and, uh, con- I mean, you know, the first greatest hits is platinum. Mechanical Resonance is double platinum. Great Radio right. Controversies, triple platinum. Five Man Acoustic Jams, triple platinum. I right. think Psychotic Supper's double platinum. Bust the Nuts got to be close to platinum now. Right. Great. I, yeah. I, I. You know. But but then again, there were probably more records that we sold that no one ever counted. That went on. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. That's true. You, you guys. guys, are, you guys know, hands, you know are you guys? Are you guys hands on with that kind of stuff? Like, are you aware of that? Do you keep track of that? I try to, just mm-hmm. because I want to make sure we get paid for yeah. the work we did. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I love I, that. Let's put it this way. When you look at the body of work that the band has done, and, uh, you know, we've been a band for 37 years, minus the five we were broken up, or four and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 14 million is probably not even accurate. It's probably more than that. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you're rich. You know, yeah, sure. I mean, it's not 140 million, right? <laughs> well, somebody got rich off of your your stuff, but yeah, it's no, usually not the artists. Made, lots of people made money, absolutely. Yeah. So, so I gotta. There's actually a story, but it's gonna parlay into a question. So I gotta tell you, it in high school, my very first band, our very first song that we did was inspired by you guys with signs. That's our very first song. I don't know. Do you hear that kind of thing all the time? Like, yeah, that our band is our first big deal because. It's huge for us playing that in backyards and whatnot. So is that a so it was a big deal for us. Do you get that so the a lot first of people saying you learned with signs and it was because of we played signs? Well the first yeah, the first <laughs> band I was in, yeah, the first song we all learned together was signs and you know, it was inspired by you guys. Was of course. It our We'd never heard or five man electrical bands version. It was your version, yeah. We'd never heard the other one. You know, we were yeah, kids. No, we... I know a lot of people thought that was our song, but it's a cover. <laughs> well, I, I say thank you. I'm glad we could inspire you. Yeah, you know, I, my first song I think I learned was "Stranglehold." Very nice, great song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that bass riff was easy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I just say, so do you get that a lot, like from young bands? Who, not that I'm in a young band, uh, but you... yeah, I mean, I, I, sometimes I see bands playing our songs, you know, covers, and I go, well, you know, sometimes they they do a nice job, and I I compliment them on it, and if they don't, I just. I don't say anything, <laughs> you know. But that would have yeah, been us. I've, 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 <laughs> I've heard people play our songs. Some of some some people play them pretty good. That, there's mm-hmm. actually, you know, Frank's got this band Red Voodoo that he manages and produces and stuff. And I saw them do a version of Getting Better before I even knew they knew Frank, and they crushed it. They were amazing. They they kicked its ass. I was like, yeah. Very cool. So I do yeah, that. yeah. All right, Rich. Okay. Anything you want to that you wanted to put in the book that you didn't? 
No, not really. No. Okay. I mean, I, I think there's enough little juicy bits to keep everyone that wants some TMZ factor in there, you know, uh, yeah, right. happy. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not like I wanted to do the dirt on anyone, you know, or, or you know, really put anything in there. Right. You know, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't read that way either. No, right. I, I don't feel I don't feel like I left anything out. I don't go. Oh, right. I wish I would have said that. Mm-hmm. And I don't. On the other hand, I don't go. Oh, I wish I hadn't have said that. You know, mm-hmm. to the opposite sure. of it either. Cool. Well, yeah. I got to say, you know, Rich and I are, are beyond jealous that so you get to hang out with and be friends with Joe Elliott. You know, it's another guy that we both grew up uh, just listening to and just idolizing. So. Tell us about your friendship with that. everybody in Def Leppard. It seems like Joel is kind of your your best bond with him. With them. Well, yeah, him and Phil. Yeah. Um, but you know, the first guy I I well the first guy I bonded with was Phil, because he came. You know, I, I talk about how when we were in England that first tour, Joe wasn't around. You know, he was preoccupied or whatever. He said he wasn't. You know, mm-hmm. around and he wasn't. You know fairness to them they they would come in later and stuff but you know you'd see him at sound check or whatever and and uh you know i just thought well maybe he doesn't like us or you know whatever and then you know when we got to uh glens falls new york and we were doing rehearsals for hysteria tour he was in the room next to me one night and he came and knocked on the door and came in and hung out he could hear me and frank in there and hung out and me and him bonded over the love of Paul McCartney and Wings. And mm. uh, from that day on, we were just, we were pals. And I used, you know, that whole tour, I'd always go out to movies with him or dinner or hang out with him. And he's always been the kind of guy that's like a big brother to me in a band. And if I, if I have a problem in Tesla or something, you know, like, because he's in a band like, like I am. I say, hey, you know, uh, if I need advice, he, he's I can go to him for advice and stuff. He's just a good, he's a great friend of mine. I mean, he's like, it's like a mentor. He's like a big brother in a rock band. I don't have a lot of friends in bands. Him and Jimmy, and that's it. Yeah, jealous and of that John, one too. That's also John incredible. Five, Jimmy like Page, you know, I know you mentioned that in the book. You guys were, yeah, were yeah, very close. Jimmy, that's just you know yeah. another idol. Yeah. Well, for me, he was. Yeah, him and Paul McCartney were my heroes when I was a kid. Joe right. Elliott wasn't my hero when I was a kid, but he's, sure. he's my hero now. I mean, I think Joe Elliott, you know, no one can take the piss out of him. Or, I mean, he's hardworking. He made that band and he's kept that band together. And, you know, you got to respect him, whether or not you like Def Leppard or not. He's created a, do you get annoyed when Tessa's labeled as a hair metal band? Yes, it does annoy me. Uh, yeah. Someone was asking me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Craig. Because I, I think it's condescending. I think to, to say that that that's when people call us a hair metal band, that's like saying that, that the only thing we did was we had good hair. It's like, what right. about the fucking songs? Right, what right. does my hair have to do with the fucking music? Right. So yeah, I right. don't like being called a hair band. I think it's condescending. Right. You know, they, they don't call the Black Crows a hair band. They had longer hair than we did, mm-hmm. right? They came out the same period of time. Yeah, so not very, it, and not very, and not very different from Tesla either, slightly, no, but not no. very. different. I mean, if we were like any band of that time period, we were more like the Black Crows than we were Warrant, mm-hmm. right? Winger, you know what I mean? We were more like that, the blues-based rock and roll band. They were actually way more flashy than we were, you know. So yeah, I, I don't like it. It, it, but I don't. I, you know, I'm used to it. I don't give a fuck anymore. But when mm. people ask the question, I will tell me. Yeah, you know, look, just say we're a cool band from the '80s that had blues-based rock and roll songs that, you know, wore jeans and working, working people's, you know, working yeah. people. And we could be your next door neighbor. We'd be the fucking gardener, you know. <laughs> I could do that. I could be the dude that comes over right now and mows your lawn. Matter of fact, I haven't played concerts in a while. You need your lawn mode? <laughs> Not in Arizona, but uh, but no, I appreciate That's that. That's right. You guys got rocks and shit for grass. Uh-huh. Sand. Yeah. Sweeping the sand. <laughs> but, uh, 
No, this is a real quick follow-up to that. You know, Rich and I are involved with the Metal Hall of Fame, and we've had that discussion about like hair metal. Like, do we categorize use that as a category? I'm like, no, that's kind of insulting. You, you it's know, kind, to, it is insulting. Yeah. It's, it's not nuts. Um, we uh, <laughs> we we put it as far. You know, it's like why not just you know, rock and roll, just We're a uh, rock and roll band. We called it we called it hard rock metal because it was it's hard rock with the metal edge. I guess. You know. I guess. I mean, you know, we, we did a lot of ballads. Tesla had a lot of ballads, so. Right. Yeah. We were more like Foreigner, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you also yeah. were playing on Headbangers Ball, and, and you could fit on Headbangers Ball. Yeah, too. yeah, we could get heavy. You know, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Great. So, right, I... speaking of, speaking yeah, of heavy, speaking of heavy, I got some requests, being a fan, for your set list, so I'm curious if, you know, oh, tell yeah. me Tell me if you played them recently, <laughs> if you would put them in the set, if you don't like All these right. songs. Okay? All right. Is that cool? All right. Rock me to the top. Play it all the time. Okay. But has it been a while? Because last time I saw you guys, you didn't do it. I don't well, think. We can Look, we have 14 albums. We only play right. an hour and a half. Okay. All right. So, like, I don't see it in there that often, so that's why I asked that one. Well, um, I, I, but you, let me just go ahead. Go ahead, and then I'll, okay. I'll give you my – Overview of this whole topic. Okay. All right. Don't de rock me. Talking about heavy. Don't play it. Okay. Had enough. I haven't played it since Psychotic Supper. Okay. Is it a song you like or you just prefer not to play it? Here's the thing. Okay. You have some more you want to ask me though about? Uh, a couple more. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah, because then I'll then I'll give you an answer that kind of covers the whole. Okay. Lady Luck. Played it a couple of years ago for a okay. while. I think this is probably my favorite. Flight to Nowhere. I think we only played that on in like 1989 for a couple of shows. <laughs> uh, Action Talks. Have played it over the years in and out of the set every now and again. Okay, and Shine Away. Played that more than any of them, probably. Oh, okay. Okay, so your so thoughts now on let me all answer those. your question. Okay. There's guys like you who are hardcore fans. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I come to your town, and the venue holds 2,000 people. Right? right? Now, those hardcore fans, they might make up 150 people in that audience and the other people they they know signs they know love song they know what you give they know modern day cowboy they know little Susie, right they know paradise they know these so you have to balance the set out between the hits which mm -hmm. the masses the bulk of the crowd that's what they want to hear okay then you have people like yourself that want to hear these obscure songs, right? So we try to put in a couple of those a night, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take Shine Away for an example. If everyone out there had a card to vote, because we like to vote in this country, mm -hmm. right? What would you like us to play? Shine Away or Song in Emotion? Similar songs, right? Same kind of song. Yeah, yeah kind of. What movie. do you think's gonna win? Probably song in emotion. Yeah, I'm sure. So that that's the thing. You've got to kind of go with that. Yeah. It's like guys right. like yourself who are hardcore fans. You're gonna go to multiple shows anyway. So you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we do. I mean, if you look at our set list, we throw in a couple of those every night. And we mm -hmm. kind of rotate them out. So it's, you know, maybe one night it's lazy days, crazy nights. One mm -hmm. night it's Action Talks. One night it's Shine Away. One night it's Freedom Slaves. One night it's Time. You know, some of them we just don't play anymore. Like, had okay. enough. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. we play Rock Me, right? Mm -hmm. Or Action Talks or Solution. You know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we try to go with, you know, a balance. And this is the thing that me and Frank go kind of have discussions over he'd like to play more deep cuts mm -hmm. but i think if you did that then the people that came there expecting to hear 
all your hits are going to leave disappointed. So it's a fine balance you got to try to achieve. I mean, you go see Aerosmith. They play all their hits. Okay. I saw the Black Crows. And they didn't play any of them. And people were leaving. Mm. You don't want that. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's it's hard. It's a balance. You know, I go see Paul McCartney. I want him to play Oh Darling. It ain't going to happen. Mm. You know, he plays yeah. all the hits. Yeah. He plays a couple of the, 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 the kind of rarer tracks. And you're talking about a guy that's got, you know, 50 years worth of music. Mm. So... 60 years, I think, right? He, yeah. yeah, he was in a band before Wings. I don't know if you yeah, know. Yeah, that Beatles guy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's how we try to approach the set list. Okay. But, you know, I mean, it's tough, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's tough yep. being in a band, guys. Mm-hmm. I understand. I thought, I'd, you know, I thought I'd just throw those couple requests out there. Maybe no, I can no, hear. I hear maybe, maybe I can hear one or two of them next tour. Every <laughs> night on the Psychotic Supper tour, we played Had Enough, mm. eighteen months straight, because that was the album we were promoting at the time. Yeah, right? right, right. And that wasn't a hit on the record. We had six singles on that record. Right. right? So yeah. you had to play those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were playing seven songs. Yeah. One night eight off site. So we were playing two and a half hours. We were trying to kill Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, we were trying to kill him. Dude, sing for three hours a night, five nights a week. Well, I guess it's not helping either that I requested all heavy songs too on top of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So is but is that still every one of those songs uh-huh. with all due respect aren't the songs that the majority of people recognize tesla for right right sure their songs that a hardcore fan like yourself would want to hear because you've heard all the hits and you want to hear the deep cuts yeah and unfortunately you know when you got so many records i mean we're we're, you know we're not even able to play all the the let's just call them the a songs off the record right Mm -hmm. off each record that we made Right. You know what I mean? So it kind of depends sure. on what time of where we are, what record we're promoting. Right. You know, and, mm-hmm. and you know it's 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 tough. That's probably the toughest thing for us to do is come up with a set list. Yeah, you don't have a shortage of great songs. That's a good thing to have. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah that's thank a good you. Point. I appreciate that. I, I, I <laughs> hope. Yeah, that is a good thing. I I hope. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I, I have. To... We thought we we think they're all great, and we wouldn't have put them on a record. <laughs> with the exception of games people play we didn't think that was great oh okay yeah that's covered in the book yeah um, yeah but, I uh, hated that one still do we did the right, ahead, Jack. version of the ocean and that's what we wanted to put on the album but I don't know if you guys have ever heard it have you no, no. and of course huge Zeppelin fans I gotta I, you know I saw you mention it in the book I thought I gotta check it out but uh, you see, we got a comment from Janessa Press. She's hey, giving, Janessa, some Soul Motor. giving some love to Soul Motor. I have Motor. a new Soul Motor record coming out as soon as the book. I'm done promoting the book. I have 24 brand new Soul Motor songs. And I just so, don't know how I'm going to put them out. I might put one out a month for the next two years. And okay. the stuff is killer. Nice. If you're into Soul Motor, you'll love it because it's Soul Motor. I'm lucky. I have two really cool bands. Nice. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Jack. Go over the question. Um, Wait, I just yeah. want to say one thing. Yep. I hope Tiger Woods is okay. You know, I yeah. just heard my wife said something. Yeah. He, he has an accent or something? I didn't. Yeah, he got, he got terrible he got accent. Guys. Oh, shit. Okay. My battery's going. We got 20, 20 left on my battery. I'm sorry, we're at 35 minutes, so we're, we're good. Um, I just hope Tiger Woods is okay. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I hope for Tiger Woods. I'm glad he's, you know, been coming back and stuff. So I heard he got, but uh, okay, Tiger's fine. Let's get on back on to where we were. Sure. Um, have you ever met him? All over the place. No, that's cool. Have you ever met him? Or, or... No, I'd love yeah. to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That doesn't. That wasn't my question, though. But like I said, about 
about 800 questions came up as you're talking. So I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to go actually a little bit, uh, we're going to take a little detour. So tell us, you're putting together a mixtape, uh, Paul McCartney mixtape. What are, what, what are some of your favorite songs that are going to be on there? Paul McCartney? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got Spotify? Uh, I yeah. actually use Amazon, but yeah, Spotify. Yeah, I'll, Spotify. I'll make you a playlist. I mean, it's going to be cool. Band on the Run. It's going to be, you know, Live and Let Die. It's going to be Maybe I'm Amazed. It's going to be um, uh, High, High, High. It's going to be Junior's Farm. It's going to be Uncle Albert. It's going to be Monkberry Moon Delight. It's going to be Helter Skelter. It's going to be Oh Darling. It's going to be Blackbird. It's going to be, you know, um, his new album's got some great, amazing stuff on it. I, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I like like Riches, like the deep stuff. That's me with McCartney, man. I can tell you everything about every record, every bootleg. And I love that. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of music. Everyone yeah. in Texas mm -hmm. is fans of music. So cool. But that would probably, you know, that would start. That'd be a good start on McCartney. It'd be hard if you said, I'll pick 10 songs that were Beatles and Paul McCartney and Wings and Paul McCartney. It'd be hard to narrow right. that down to 10. Hey Jude, let it be. I mean, they're, let it be is my favorite all time song. So. No. Oh, yeah, of the course. The song a... ever written was let it be. And on the eighth yeah. day, God created Paul McCartney. <laughs> on the ninth day, he created Freddie Mercury. On the 10th day, he created Jimmy Page. What do you think he had to do on the 11th day? I got some names, but what do you, what do you do on the 11th day? He had to rest again. <laughs> <laughs> and then he created metal. Then he created Jack and Rich. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Exactly. <laughs> Good answer. We're gonna have we're gonna have you on every week, Brian. That's that's <laughs> you know life began in the nutsack. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard, yeah. yeah. Just don't I don't want to picture in my, you know, when you picture your own parents, though, like, then it gets a little, yeah. But, but I mean, that, that brings us back to the book, right? I mean. Uh... <laughs> yeah, my dad was the milkman. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the title of the book. Um, I am the bastard son of the milkman. Which, again, is one of those one of those candid things, man. Like I said, a lot of rock stars. I mean, I wear, Nikki's... like a badge on, yeah. man. It's like, hey, I'm a bastard. You fucking hey, I'm a bastard. You know, when someone calls me a bastard, I am. You know, man, you got to make light of these things, guys. You can't take it so mm -hmm. serious. Everyone has right. hard knocks in life. Right. True. There's a lot of fucking ups and downs. What mm -hmm. builds your character is how you deal with those fucking hard knocks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, that, you know, yeah. for anybody in any walk of life, you know, you pick yourself up off the ground. Gotta hang tough. <laughs> great song. <laughs> yeah, great, great one. Yeah. Don't play uh, that one anymore on the set. See? Oh. But yeah, I've, I've, heard it before on, I've heard it before on tours several times. That's why I didn't throw that one in there. Yeah, we play it a lot. It's one of the, it was one of the, the hits yeah. on you know, we play Heaven's Trail, we play Love Song. Yeah. We play, you know, and then you got Way It Is in Paradise, both on those those records. You mm -hmm. got Lazy Days create. You know, we had a lot of songs back then. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, Lazy, you know, Lazy you Days you brought back. Some good, good stuff. You know. Yeah, Changes. Lazy Days you brought back recently. Changes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah last yeah. tour, I think it was right. Yeah, every yeah. I mean, we play it. You know, we play. Yeah. You know, play call it what you want. Sometimes, anyways. Enough of the old set. But come on. <laughs> what else? Let's talk about something else. All right. Um, well, actually, I got to follow up, Rich, and then I'll shut up. Then you can take. But so, so. Let's just follow up on the McCartney thing. So why, what, how was, uh, we can work it out. How did you end up choosing that one to be on, on the acoustical jam? Well, I picked it obviously. Right. Right. I mean, how, why, why did you pick that one over? Like Because it lent to the acoustic unplugged thing. It was an acoustic based song. Yeah. Okay. And, oh, that'd be a great one to do. And it had the whole band, you know, I could have said Blackbird, but then it would have been just Frank and Jeff. And I wanted to play right. too, especially if it was <laughs> going to be a Beatles song. Yeah. All right, that's a good answer. That works for me. All right, that's try it, Rich. <laughs> okay. Rich? Yep. Oh, all right. Um, the worst and the best tour Tesla's been on. Oh, they're all great tours. You know, there's no okay. worst tour. The best tour, Def Leppard. 
we have most history with Def Leppard, and they treated us the best of any other band. But they're all great. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead, Jack. All right, cool. All right, that gives me that sooner than I thought. So tell us, we see you're sitting in your studio. Tell us all about this other part of Brian Wheat that people might not know about. You're a producer, and you're kind of a gear geek, right? I mean, tell us about all this cool shit we're seeing around you. There's the guy that built it. Hey. <laughs> Uh, this is my studio so you know i produce and manage young bands and i come here to hone my craft tesla records here has Mm -hmm. you know the last three albums well since into the now they've all been done at my studio basically um you know if you're, you know, if you drive race cars, you gotta have a race car, right? Right. Records, you produce records, you gotta have a studio. So, what's some of the, what's some of your favorite gear then? I mean, you got feel free to kind of get technical and like These geek out a little bit. Right here. These are Neve 1073s. That's a Marshall that Frank gave me. That's amazing. That I use. Um. The rest of it, I don't care. You know, those yeah. two pieces of gear I would take in a fire. If I would try to get out of here. The rest of it can be replaced. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, there are these things, but I mean, yeah, I, I collect a lot of gear. It's like a drug habit. You know, I quit doing drugs and started buying gear. And at least I have all this gear that if I had to sell it, I have something to sell. The money I wasted on, you know, drugs and alcohol, I have nothing to show for it. But, you know, that's that's not why, you know, it's either here or there. I just, you know, I, I like I like having a recording studio. I like, that's what I love to do. I have passion for it. All okay. right. Excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, if, again, if you're out there, you got questions for Brian Wheat of uh, Tesla, then drop them in. But, Rachel, all right, your turn for a question now. Okay, so until Tesla can play live shows, do you think you guys may do something virtually? Don't know. You know, it's like we're all over different parts of the country. Mm. You know, we all have families. We all have, you know, some of us still have our parents and they're elderly. And some of us are pretty concerned about COVID. Maybe some of us aren't so concerned. Um, so I, I would say probably not. You know, this virtual yeah. thing's really kind of hard to do. I mean, mm-hmm. you see Tesla, we feed off a crowd. Yeah. You know, we're playing to a fucking stone wall. It's, that'd be like, you know, trying yeah. to have sex without a chick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it, it's, yeah. it, it, you know, we it takes both things. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to have the crowd and Tesla to make a Tesla show. Right. Did you know, Rich much, go fuck himself? There's as much as a part of the gig as we are. You see? Mm-hmm. So to just put us in a in a warehouse somewhere with a bunch of lights on us, I mean that's like making a video shoot. We were never really good at that. That's not really what we did. Mm. You know, we're about the whole experience. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. No, cool. Go ahead, Jack. Um so I was gonna ask. Can you uh, just tell us a little bit about the difference between setup for an acoustic show versus, you know, a, the Marshalls stack to the to the sun, to the sun? Like, what's the difference in the setup and prep? I guess mentally and even with the gear. Well, you don't have amps for one. Sure, that's the obvious one. Um, uh, I am not going back on tour with this uh, beard. No. <laughs> <laughs> This is my COVID look, right? See, I haven't dyed my hair, got this crazy <laughs> beard, and you know, I'm not doing that. Um, so just you know, the way you approach playing things is different as well. So when you do acoustic show, you know, you don't have the app, so you know, you don't get feedback, you don't get sustain. So you mm-hmm. approach playing those songs differently. More of the you know around the campfire kind of vibe, if you will. Yeah, very cool. A couple uh, more guys, and then I, I my battery's gonna go dead. 
Yeah, okay. yeah. We could, like, if you got a couple more questions, go ahead, Rich. Go ahead. We'll, the next one. Well, leave us off with you know what you got going on for the rest of the year. You got the book out, so give everybody some updates on what they can expect from you coming up. Okay. For Twenty-one the books. The book's out. Go get it. You'll have a laugh. It's funny. It's sad. It's it's everything. You know, it's it's me. It's all over the place. Get it. I make you laugh. I guarantee it'll make. There are parts that'll make you laugh. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna put out some Soul Motor stuff. Right, because I've been working on it for a few years and it's time to put it out. Then hopefully, hopefully, as soon as Dr. Fauci says we can go back out and play, mm -hmm. um, we'll go out and play <laughs> concerts. Because really, we're at, I, I, everyone asks me, when are you going to play? I don't have a fucking clue, guys. Right. Yeah. It's not up to me. Right. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it, you know, I mean, you know, now we have a vaccine supposedly and hopefully that that, you know, is that going to do the trick? And then I hear that it doesn't do anything. It's like, what the fuck do you have it for? <laughs> I don't know who to believe. You know, mm -hmm. you look at the news, you look at wherever and you get contradicting on each fucking topic you look at, you know, including the fucking weather. Look what happened in Texas. So, right. Uh, right. I don't know when we're going to play. I mean, we're supposedly we're supposed to start in July. But we were supposedly supposed to play last year. So I don't know. So the next thing would be after I put out this Soul Motor stuff, hopefully it would be that Tesla goes out and plays shows again. And then after that, you know, address probably making another record, you know, and, and then doing what we do. You know, continuing on yeah. doing that and hopefully, you know, the world can get back to, you know, something that resembles normal again. And we can, you know, go about our business and people can go back to work and people can cannot be afraid to be around you. And, you know, there's so, it's a really it's a depressing time right now, guys. Yeah, you know, there's a lot, of, yeah. There's yeah, a lot of fucking shit, you know, out there. It's tough for people mm -hmm. to deal with. Agreed. But you got to do the best you can, man. Yep. Yeah. Put on a mask if you got to go out. So if not for you, for the next guy, for the guy that's right. out there that maybe he's freaked out by it, you know? Mm -hmm. I got no problem doing that, man. Yeah. I mean, right. I, I got no problem with, with that. Yeah. I just want to go. I just want to go back to work. You know, I want to go back and play shows. And I think people need something that makes them smile again. Because right now it's just a lot of frowns mm -hmm. on people's faces mm -hmm. you know yeah. no one's smiling about any of this right agreed yeah. so yeah no, that's a great way to take us out. I, I love the book. Thank you for the book because I think it's great. Like I said, it touches on a yeah. lot more than it's not just a rock and roll tell all. It's a really great book. So I appreciate putting it out. Appreciate the decades of great music, man. It's an yes. honor talking to you. Well, thanks, man. Uh, Hopefully, yes. we can get another decade out of us, you know. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing. I'm looking forward to hearing half of those songs next tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you'll hear them. I mean, how many shows you plan on coming to? <laughs> I'll come out yeah, to Phoenix. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, you, you're going to have to come to multiple shows if you want to hear all. The yeah, shows. I know. I was just we busting. throw in, we throw in a couple every night, but they're different. Yeah. You know what I mean, and then you yeah. have the mainstays that. You got it. Yep. It's like going to McDonald's and they don't serve the fucking Big Mac anymore, man. Right. Because you wanted the McRib. <laughs> well, we saw what happened to the McRib, didn't we? <laughs> or going to Wait. Kentucky Fried Chicken and ordering a hamburger. Right. So which Tesla song is the McRib, though? That's what I'm trying to figure out. But no. I <laughs> but... Games people play. <laughs> That's the <McShit> sandwich. <laughs> Uh, uh, but, uh, all right. Yeah. Well, we'd love to have you back on, man. When, when Soul Motor, when the new Soul Motor is ready to, to drop, yeah, we'd love to have you back, back on. on. Yeah, you'd be welcome ready, anytime. Man. You know, probably in the next two months. So, cool. Yeah. Thanks, heavy, so for you, heavy, you, rich, you heavy metal monster, you. You'll, you'll <laughs> like it. It's it's heavy. The Soul Motor awesome. is really heavy. Cool. So. All right. Well, all right. Thank you so much. I mean, do you Brian, want we... me to play a song real quick for you? Live on your fucking thing. If you can. can, yeah, you got enough yeah, battery. Go there? You got your bad enough battery on your phone that you can. Let's see, man. Okay, awesome. try.
Let me try, man. <laughs> Let me try, man. Right, let's see here. Um, how do I do this? By the way, Tracy Ann Layton Violet says, thank you for this interview. Always a pleasure hearing from Brian. Hope that Mo and the pups are doing well. They're all good. They're in uh, uh, Texas. And, you know, we, we had this uh, pretty gnarly uh, weather. And, you know, but we're okay. We, 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 uh, we survived, man. There we go. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this to play. Hang on, bro. No problem. Little soul motor exclusive here. Yeah. There you go, man. Can you hear it? Yep. Yeah. That is heavy. That is uh, definitely a heavy rocker there. Vanessa loves it. Yeah. So is that heavy enough for you, dude? That is a heavy <laughs> one. There you go. Thanks for the little clip yeah. there. That's awesome. There you Thank go. You. That's kind of what it sounds like, dude. Great vocals too, by the way. We didn't touch on uh, and it's Darren, right? We didn't, we didn't touch yeah, on. Yeah, Darren. Yeah, great. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was. I was starting to watch. Lucky. I got two great singers, man. You know, yeah. cool. Two great, yeah. cool bands that are completely different from each other. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, yeah. dude. Power to the Thanks, people. Thanks, All right. Brian. Keep the faith, man. Hang tough, right? Got to hang, hang tough. Yeah. yeah. See you in the. All right. Be well. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everyone.